and know that even though there's these awkward and uncomfortable exams, you are doing something amazing to help these patients. <laughs> What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Giselle and I'm an ultrasound technologist, aka sonographer who lives out here in Las Vegas. And I love all things Disney. Check out this ring that I got. It's got little sparkly Mickeys. And it's like, there's different ones. So it's like stackable. So I can wear like two or one or on any other fingers, but yeah. Yeah, I love Disney. <laughs> so welcome to another video. Today, um, I'm answering a question here that I feel like needs to be answered. And so, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, comment them down below and we can talk about them a little bit more in depth. But today I'm talking about something kind of uncomfortable, or I guess you could say like weird. I don't know. They pretty much asked me, how do you handle uncomfortable exams? I mean, it could be uncomfortable for the patient or the sonographer. And yeah, so we're going to talk about uncomfortable exams and exams that you guys probably wouldn't even know that we do if you're not going into the medical field yet or know nothing about ultrasound. And I'm sure some of you guys are just doing your research or looking up or you just clicked on this video because you saw uncomfortable ultrasound exams. I'm not sure. But today we're going to talk about uncomfortable ultrasound exams, which are pretty much the ones of private areas that in the medical field, you're going to have to pretty much scan. And if you're doing medical, your whole entire human body is pretty much something that you're going to have to scan. And so, yeah, let's just start. Let's just like, let's just go for it. Let's just start. Let's just get into it because <laughs> uh let's just break the awkwardness right because you're going into the medical field and you're gonna have to do these things and so this is kind of aiming towards more general sonographers because if you are vascular and if you are an echo you may not have to do these exams you pretty much don't really have to do these exams honestly but if you're in general you're gonna have to do these parts of the bodies and like i said pretty much the whole entire human body is something that you're going to have to work with and there are a few exams that we do that some people don't know that we do, which are one, testicles, two, prostates, three, vaginal exams or transvaginal exams. They're called transvaginal exams. So vaginal exams and breast ultrasounds, which, you know, these kinds of things are things in the medical field that we got to figure out what's going on because those are very important parts of the body. And when you do testicular ultrasounds, like these are time sensitive ultrasounds, you need to get these done. So for men who are having issues with pain or swelling, yeah, it's, you're pretty much going to get an ultrasound and it's, the best thing that you can do for yourself, honestly, as a patient, right? Because it's time sensitive because of the fact that if you wait too long, you could potentially lose your testicle. So yeah, don't mess around when it comes to the testicles because those are usually bumped up to the top of the list, especially if they're looking for what's called torsion. So we'll go into that here in a little bit, but yeah, these are exams you're going to have to do. Testicular exams, vaginal exams, and breast exams and prostate exams in some places so yeah where do we start which one do we start with since i did talk about testicles we'll we'll start with testicles and it's basically called a scrotal exam and with a scrotal exam the patient is going to be you know essentially coming in to the hospital or to outpatient for pain swelling and sometimes in the groin areas too not just the scrotal sac or the testicles because we have to figure out if there's any varicoceles, which are dilated vessels, or we have to figure out if there's any masses, cancer, any cysts, which, you know, cysts are common in any part of the body, but we need to make sure that there's no cysts there or stones and hernias. And we need to make sure there's blood flow in the testicles. So yeah, that's very, very important. And then vaginal exams we do because we also have to check, just like for males, we have to check the testicles for testicular torsion where there's no blood flow in there, right? Uh, we have to check for ovarian torsion, which in women, the ovaries can also 
tours or mean there's no blood flow to the ovaries. So we have to check those ovaries. And that's also time sensitive because you want to make sure that there is blood flow to those ovaries. Otherwise, you can lose your ovary too. So these are very important exams, you guys. Sonographers really deal with a lot of very important exams and we can tell you if there are cysts in your ovaries, we can tell you if there are masses in your ovaries, we can find out if there's ectopic pregnancies which is also very time sensitive because you don't want that to rupture in your body and cause an infection and you can potentially die from ectopic pregnancies. So yeah, it's it's pretty scary stuff but you know, those are rare but they do happen and it's just an exam that we have to do which is vaginally so internally and we have to put a probe through the vaginal canal and look closer into your internal organs because sometimes just looking on top is not enough and i'll tell you guys this who don't know it but scanning for ovaries is very hard especially when you have bowel gas around the area and you don't want to push too hard but also you kind of need to push hard to push the gas out of the way so yeah that's definitely something you're gonna have to deal with is doing a vaginal ultrasound especially if you do OBGYN. Anyone who wants to go into the OBGYN field, you are going to have to do a vaginal ultrasound. And then prostate, they're very, you know, it's interesting because every place that I've worked that did a prostate exam, they had the doctors insert the probe. Uh, but yeah, the prostate exams, they do go internally and that's uncomfortable for many people. The patient and a sonographer but like i said you're in the medical field so you kind of have to do it and you have to focus on why you're there at hand we're here to figure out what's going on and we're here to help the patient we're here mainly for the patient and that is what our job is to put the patient first and to make sure that they're comfortable in every single way possible that is an exam that you may have to do but a lot of times the sonographers just push the buttons on the machine ironically and the doctor is the one that actually looks for the prostate and whatnot um, but that's for prostate and that's what i've experienced so i'm not sure about other places and then the last thing that may be uncomfortable for your people is the breast ultrasound and yes you have to have the breast fully shown because that's how you can find breast cancer you can find cysts dilated ducts you can find masses uh we also do procedures so fine needle aspirations or we do biopsies and we take some samples from the breast and we give them to a lab and they run tests and that's how you kind of find if something is abnormal or if it's just normal pathology. So that is something you're going to have to do too. So it's very sensitive, very awkward exams in general but like i said you have to make sure that your patient is comfortable and you yourself as a sonographer going into the medical field have to adjust to that and just know that you are trying to help the patient talking to the patient really helps explaining to them what's going to happen what's going on what you're about to do that's going to help you in the long run and just know that yes, it's awkward at first, but the more and more you do them, you get more comfortable with scanning, you find a technique, you find something, you kind of get into a flow. So you know what to say to the patients and you know how to handle yourself with these patients and in these situations. But I'll tell you, if you're male, a lot of times it's harder to to do these exams but you want your patient to be comfortable so a lot of places are gonna have males have chaperones and then even in other places they have females have another chaperone inside the room as well it just depends on where you work and how they do things there but a majority of the time if there's a male doing a vaginal ultrasound i'm pretty sure they're going to have a chaperone in the room and it's just for comfortability of the patients. And even one time I had a vaginal ultrasound and she wanted somebody else in the room as well. And for her comfort and well being, I did that. And we got another technologist in the room for her to make her feel comfortable. And that's what we did. So the question pretty much was what are these uncomfortable exams and how do you deal with them or how do you, I don't know, kind of go through your days with doing them? And you just know that you're doing these because you're trying to help your patients and you're just being the best sonographer that you can be and make sure that they're comfortable. There are exams that I think people don't even realize they have to do. And when I was in lab, we did not scan each other with these sensitive exams. We didn't scan each other's, you know, private parts. We did not 
scanned breasts. We did not do vaginal. We did not do scrotal exams in lab at all. We actually just did them all and practice them in the hospital setting or at our clinical sites with our mentors there so it's definitely a learning experience you have to just dive right in and and go out there scan them do your best if you have any questions ask your mentors ask them what they say to patients ask them how to be what to say how to approach situations and honestly you don't learn unless you put yourself in the situation and you're not going to learn if you don't scan them you're not going to learn if you are really scared to do them and you have to just go out there and try your best and do your best ask questions and honestly i i like doing scrotal exams they're pretty quick and fast exams and they give you results pretty quickly and you can tell right away if there's blood flow in the testicles or not if that patient's going to need to go to surgery right away or not same with vaginal ultrasounds i like those a lot better than trans abdominal which is just on top on the belly because the vaginal ultrasounds you can see things much better than looking on top on abdominal and yeah breasts they can be very hard and usually breasts need to come along with a mammo exam so a lot of times breast ultrasounds are done in an outpatient setting those are very difficult only because breast tissue is very hard to navigate and see when you're scanning those so the more you scan the better you get at it like 100 percent. keep on scanning keep on practicing keep on asking your questions and know that even though there's these awkward and uncomfortable exams you are doing something amazing to help these patients they are in pain and they need to figure out what's going on or they have something they feel a bump or a lump and you need to figure out what is there so just do your best to communicate make sure your patient is comfortable first and foremost and make sure you are doing your job and getting out there practicing scanning and getting through these uncomfortable exams because the more you do them the more comfortable you'll get with them but hopefully that answered the question <laughs> and i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys are staying safe out there enjoying your clinicals working hard scanning a lot i hope you guys are asking questions and just know that the community is here for you guys and we're here to answer your questions hope you guys are tuning in to sonographers in the cities because there's a lot of great stuff in the podcast that you guys are missing out on if you haven't heard the episodes yet so please listen to those wherever you listen to podcasts especially on apple Podcasts, because you can rate us there and leave us a review and we would love for you guys to do that but yeah Hope you guys enjoy this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and be kind to one another and stay positive. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.